Hello Math 8 students, uh, today we are just going to review graphing linear equations. Every one of these is going to be in slope-intercept form. So we want to use what we remember about slope-intercept form to help us graph these lines. Let's get started with the first one. Um, students in class have already done this, so they're ready to offer me some feedback. Where should I get started on y equals 2x plus 5? What's the first point I should graph? Uh, Sam? 5. Where is that 5 going to go? 5 up? On the y-axis, exactly. So we're starting with 5 as the y-intercept, so we're going to find 5 on the y-axis. Now, on your paper grid, it's probably a little bit more challenging than what you guys have on your marker board grid, right? Why? What is the next thing I should do to find some more points? I found the 5. I know that's going to be on the line. Where am I going to find other points? Kaden, S. The slope. So what is the slope of this line? Good, so you recognize that this 2, right next to the x, the number multiplied by the x is a slope. But you also said, hey, slope is usually written as a rise over a run. So when it's not a fraction, our first step is, let's change it to a fraction. 2 is the same as 2 over 1. So that means I'm going to rise 2 and run 1. What's the problem when I try and rise 2? Goes off the grid. Yep, so we can eyeball it. Yeah, it's going to be probably right here-ish, going up 2 and over 1. What can I do to confirm that it's done correctly and nicely and neatly and that... It's all going to be math practice six precise. Sam? Yeah, since I can't go up and to the right, let's go down and to the left. And there's going to be another point. And we can continue that. Down and to the left. So down to left one. Um, when I'm drawing these lines, I want to make sure that I'm going from edge to edge on this grid. And I want to make sure that each line is completed with an arrow to show that just because I'm done drawing it doesn't mean it's done existing. Okay, not too shabby at all. Are you ready for your next one? Marker boards first. Y equals negative 2x minus 1. We're going to pause the recording as students give this one a try on their marker boards. All right, students in class have already done this. Let's go over it together. Gabe says we're going to start at negative 1. Negative 1 because we are subtracting 1. So negative 1 on the y-axis. What do I do now? Charlie, what would we do next? Yeah, exactly. We recognize that the slope is negative 2. And the slope is best as a rise over a run. So change that negative 2 to a fraction, negative 2 over 1. Now I can see that the rise is negative 2, which means I know I'm actually going to be falling. And the run is a positive 1. So from here, down 2 and to the right one. Down two and to the right one. Please understand why it's happening this way. The rise is negative, so I'm going down. But the run is positive, so I'm going to the right. And I can repeat that. Down two and to the right one. I've got a couple of good crosshair points. So now I can draw that line and extend it from edge to edge and finish it up with arrows. Okay, students in class, erase your marker boards, erase that last line. You're ready for your next one. Students watching the video, here's the next one that you're going to graph. And students in class, on your marker boards, here it is. Y equals 1 fourth X minus 3. Pause the recording, let's get this done. Okay. All right, let's go over this together. Students in class have already done it, let's go over it together. What is the Y intercept here, class? Just shout it out. Negative 3, so I'm going to start on the y-axis at negative 3. The slope is, what? Go ahead and call it out. 1 fourth. It's what's multiplied by x. So with the slope of 1 fourth, that means starting on this point that I already made, I'm going to rise 1 and I'm going to run 4. Both of those are positive. So from here, I'm going to rise 1, run 4 in the positive direction. There's a point. And I can't do another point because I go off of the grid on this one, right? So what can I do instead to make sure I have three points to make it really nice and neat? K to S. Arrows, eventually, yes. We'll get to arrows eventually. Eyes on the screen. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I like to have more than one, or more than just two points to make sure that my line is nice and neat, right? So I went up one and over four. If I try and go up one and over four, I'm off the grid. So what can I do instead? Back to you, K to S. Work backwards, which means instead of up, I'm going to go down. And instead of right, I'm going to go left. That gives me three points to make sure that my line is nice and neat, as precise as it can be. 
We're extending it all the way to the edges and finishing it up with arrows. Okay, they will start getting a little bit harder eventually, but we're not there yet. Yes, Emery. I'm a little bit confused. Will you go up to the board to show me what it is that you're talking about? Then it's going to move as you touch. Go ahead. I No, I am still confused. So to get from this crosshair point, Emery, to this crosshair point, how much am I changing? Do you see it? Uh, were you going from this crosshair point to this crosshair point? Is that what you were trying to do? Is that what happened? Or uh, are we... I see, I see, yes. So Emery, here I'm going up one, rising one, running four. Here, since I can't continue up one over four, up one over four, because I go off of the grid, that's why I went backwards and I went down one and to the left four. However, if we just focus on this crosshair point and this crosshair point, notice what's happening. I can still go up one and over four. Does that clarify that? Okay, very good. Um, here is your next one. So erased marker board so you're ready to go fresh and clean slate and here is your next one you're going to graph y equals x minus one pause the recording you guys graph it on your paper while students in class graph it on their marker boards all right this one was an interesting one where am i starting is this still in that slope intercept form y equals mx plus b is it still in that form yeah so what's the b value what's that y intercept Call it out. Not, not one. Yeah, it's a negative one. Yep, so I'm going to start on the y-axis at negative one. What is the slope? Is there anything multiplied by x? Yeah, what is it really? One. Yep, one x. It's not zero x, even though there's nothing there. We've talked about this lots of times before. I have a dog means I have one dog, just like I have, there is just a single x, so it's 1x. So 1x means I have a slope of 1, which is 1 over 1, which means the rise is a positive 1 and the run is a positive 1. So up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1. I've done that a few times so I can find some nice neat points. And my line goes from edge to edge. And I've got the arrows on each end. Okay, we might skip some of these ones. Um, in class, we're going to skip 5 and 6, which makes them homework. I'm also going to skip past 7 through 12. Those will all be homework as well. Let's try these more challenging ones. 13 is very similar to the one we just did, so let's make 13 homework, which means I want you to focus on number 14. Number 14 is what we're graphing next, so clear your marker boards. Let's get ready to do that. And students watching the video, pause the recording and do number 14. Ready, set, go. This one looks different, doesn't it? Why is it different? What do you notice about it? Let's see the hands. Siley. Yeah, we're lazy mathematicians, so they should be adding zero, but are they? No, but that's our job to recognize. What is the y-intercept then? Zero. What is the slope? Negative two. Yep, negative two, which is better as a fraction. So negative two, eyes on the screen, please. This is important. You guys all caught it, but let's make sure we really emphasize it. Negative two is negative two over one. So that means I have a rise of negative two and a run of positive one. So from here, rising negative two, running positive one, positive direction. Continue that. Rising negative two, running positive one. We're not done. Eyes on the screen one more time. Is it okay if I say this? 2 over negative 1. Yeah, because that's going to make the rise be a positive 2 and the run a 
negative one. So I would be going in the negative direction. And look at that. It is all lying on the same line, yes? Okay, let's get that one on our papers. Okay, and the reason I don't want you to erase that one is because before you erase, let's take a look at number 15. It's going to be really similar, right? Are those lines going to be identical? Do we need to erase or can we just keep that other line? Discuss, and if you think you can just keep that other line, keep that other line. If you think you need to re-graph, then erase and re-graph. We're going to pause the recording as students work on this. Ready, set, go. Okay, students in class have now finished. Now they're going to discuss, were these the same line? No. What is different about this? Talk me through why this one was so different. Uh, get me started, Danielle. Yeah, good catch. Here, we were lazy. We should have had a plus zero. We didn't. Here, we were lazy. We should have had a zero X, and we didn't. So really, truly, this should have been y is equal to 0x plus a negative 2 or minus 2. Mathematicians are lazy, so when there is no x, that's 0x, just like I don't have any fish. So when I'm talking about my pets, why would I talk about my fish, right? We don't mention it if we don't have it, but we do need to think. That means Mrs. Proctor has zero fish, or in this case, there are a zero slope. So that means that we have a y-intercept of negative 2, starting at negative 2. If there is no slope I saw on one student's board, this is an example of all run, no rise. No rise and all run, which means, am I rising at all? No. Am I running? Yes, always running. And so up 0 over 1, or maybe up 0 over 3, or maybe up 0 back 4. All run and no rise, finish that up with some arrows. Okay, let me look at the time. Uh, let's do one more with the marker boards and then I'm going to leave you to it uh, to just practice the rest. The next one that we're going to do is number 17. Are you ready? Pause the recording, try it on your own first. Ready, set, go. All right. What is this? Uh, we know that this line looks different. Y is the equation, not a Y equals. Talk to me about why now it says X equals. What does that mean for this problem? Um, Gabe. Yeah, it means it's going through the X axis. Looking at this one, number 15, was this one ever going through the X axis? No, this one is going through the X axis, so we can kind of interpret it the same, but kind of like the inverse or the opposite. So it is going through the x-axis. Where is it going through the x-axis? Uh, K to an S. At 1, yes. At 1. So is that it? Is it just a point and not really a line? Okay, what do I do now? You guys all had it correct, so let's see the hands. Tell me your thoughts. What are we doing with this information now? Uh, thank you, Jaden. Great. That is fantastic. The slope is undefined. I need voices off eyes on the screen. I know you're trying to work ahead, but this is a really good discussion I want you to be involved in. The slope is undefined. That is why on all of these other problems, we can see a slope and we can see a y-intercept. Here, all we can see, I went too far. Here, the slope is undefined. So that's why we can't define the slope in the equation or show that slope in the equation because the slope is undefined. And so it is a line that is going straight up and down into the vertical line. It is never going to cross the y-axis. That's why we have to list the x-intercept, x equals 1 instead. That was fantastic. Um, we are not going to do any more on the recording. Anything that has not already been done is going to be homework if you don't finish it in class. So practice everything else on this worksheet, and that is it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.